our feature presenter for tonight, um, Igor Vassilvay, who is going to present to us the pros and cons of selling naked puts. So please put your hands together for Igor. Um, to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming, first of all, disclaimer, but uh, Ruth already read a similar disclaimer, so you understand, because I'm going to show you real companies which are rated for today, like I mean trade and everything, but uh, before you make any decision to trade, we have to consider your own circumstances, so I presume you understand that, you're all professional traders. <laughs> now, uh, today I'm going to talk about the same topic as last time, I'm just wondering uh, who was here last time? Can you? Okay, a few people were, so cool. So, uh, Partly, I'm going to repeat what I said last time, but because I had a lot of questions after that event, I actually put extra. So today, even more information than it was last time. Okay, so I try to talk fast, but if you don't understand something, just ask me straight away. Okay, because it's much easier to answer questions. Now, our plan, so first of all, I'm going to show when do we use this strategy and why do we use this strategy. Okay, I'm going to try to uncover pros and cons. So, uh, where the danger is and how you can avoid this danger. Okay, and, but before I probably start, I want to just remind you, when you're selling puts, options, you have to think about what? Not only about the premium you receive, but about underlying security which you use. It's a huge difference. If you're selling stock on some ABC company and you're selling poor stock, selling put on ABC company and then you're selling uh, stock on CBA company, even they have exactly the same price, same chart pattern, and etc., uh, they could be very different companies. And your risk will be very different. So that's why before I start talking about put options themselves, I'm going to talk a bit about underlying stock, which I'm going to uh, choose when I'm trading. So again, uh, I know that some of uh, professional traders, they always understand that majority of your success uh, attributed to your mindset. Personally, if I have a bad day, if I have an argument, and everyone has arguments sometimes, I, I don't even open the computer and don't do trades. Why? Because majority of uh, bad decisions made during your kind of bad state of mind. So that's why it's the first time. You have to have a proper mindset. If you believe that this strategy doesn't work, it's better not to do that. If you believe it works for you, so first you try simulator, test it, and then already go to real market. Don't put real money until you like perfect with uh, simulator. Then you need to understand the strategy in details. Now, and uh, from my experience, I know a lot of people who heard something and they thought, oh, that's the best strategy, and I'm going to jump and use it straight away. You can do it if you use simulator. On real account, with real money, again, try to avoid that until you understand the full strategy in detail. And then, of course, correct execution then. I've met also so many people who, instead of selling, they would be buying. Instead of selling at uh, support, for whatever reason, they decide to sell at resistance. So do its uh, opposite, okay? And as a result, they're kind of their results different as well. Okay, when do we sell puts? I always consider selling puts, it's like selling insurance. Uh, sometimes I buy puts, so when I need to buy insurance. And it's very, very similar situation. When you buy insurance, when the risk is high. When you sell insurance, when the risk is low. Similar stuff. So if you look at the, like, that's the roller coaster of stock market. It's like any stock you can take. And that's probably uh, applicable mostly for young traders, I mean young traders who just started to trade, okay, guys who spent on the market already several years, they're kind of more calm, they know that whatever goes up, it goes down, and whatever goes down, eventually uh, picks up, okay, so, but generally it goes like that, okay, so first of all we see um, the reason why a person buys, they believe the stock or any security is going to go up, that's the reason, right, and then when it goes up, they feel enthusiasm, they're happy about that, and then here they are on the peak of euphoria. They're, oh, I'm great, I'm a fantastic trader, everything looks rosy, and the thing is that at this particular moment, here, they start talking about it, talking to their friends, families, 
and etc. And when you hear somebody talking about stock, you probably know where the stock is. It's already here. Nobody is telling you about the stock which falls down. They tell, oh, you know what? Well, two weeks ago, it's already 10% up. And what people do? They jump here. And that's actually the maximum risk of losing on your investment, or whatever trade you do. Okay? So here you need to buy insurance if you do. So we buy put options in this particular moment. So, and then people enjoy the ride down. That's what happens. Okay, and uh, the way it goes, first they don't believe, okay, fine, it's a small kind of pullback, one, two percent, then it goes back down and say, okay, now it's better, they have to turn it around and move up again. And then it's already the same level as person bought, and they think, oh, sorry for my language, what is going to happen? And then, sure enough, it goes on lower, and they say, oh, stock market is not for me. They put the stop loss, closing the position, and they actually think, that this level, here is the maximum uh, risk, here is the minimum risk. Okay, so majority of indicator traders, they exit here. They sell their stock at support because their uh, psychology is not ready to handle this type of pressure. Especially if they have no diversification on their account, they buy one security and this one particular security goes down. Okay, so that's why you have to have several diversifications, so never put all the money in one security, and secondly, uh, kind of know when to buy one to sell. So here's a minimal risk of losing invested capital. Why? Because it's already fall happened. And when you see it's turning around, that's probably majority of best traders they enter positions. They know that, and that's what you are learning here uh, using technical analysis in order to buy. Okay, there is another way to identify this point using fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis uh, helps you to identify bigger roles, okay, based on uh, company probably reports, financial reports when announced, and you can see these roles, uh, which happens every three months or every six months. So that's where we sell our put options. Uh, and I'm going to explain to who knows what the put option is. Okay, who doesn't know? Okay, a few people don't. Okay, so let's have a look. So, a put option. So when you're selling the put option, you're giving somebody the right, but not the obligation, to sell you the stock at a certain price, at a certain day. Okay, I'm just going to a <coughs> simple example. And I want to compare it with just buying the share. Because if you are at this particular moment, what you can do here, you just can buy underlying security. So you can buy stock, and some of you invest in stock. So you can go and buy stock ABC or Microsoft or Intel or whatever company you choose. You can just buy the stock and write it. So, and that's why I want to compare. Why would you choose selling put option instead of just buying the stock? Okay, and uh, let's compare. This is the table which I want to see. On the left hand side, if we buy share, and on the right hand side, if we sell put option, where the pros and cons. Okay, so you see this role, assuming this kind of the trend, $10 to $11.50. Few rolls done already, you see this particular problem. So what can happen? If it repeats here, it's going to go up. Same story here. Or it can continue to go back down. Can it happen both ways? Definitely can. So you want to profit from this particular stock. What do you do? Can you imagine if you decided to buy stock? You pay $10.50, you try this up, you make it all. Good. If you buy the stock at $10.50, and it doesn't go up, up, it goes down, what do you do? And here could be different strategies, right? So first of all, you can set a stop loss and sell it. Like what, with a total loss, you have uh, 50 cents, 60 cents, depends on your risk profile, depends on where you set in your stop loss. Or you can sit and wait until the share recovers. Right? So, that, so here, the maximum reward is unlimited because the share price potentially can go up and up and up and up and never stops. But in reality, what happens? We are all humans. And as soon as it hits to a certain level, which Set in our mind, 5%, 10%, 50%, 
It depends on your patience. Usually people sell. And after that, they watch, oh my goodness, I sold with 5% uh, profitability, and then the stock rallies another 95% up. Why did I do it? And people can't explain. And it's mostly our minds. Uh, but maximum risk is what? The price you paid, right? $10.50. That's the maximum you can lose in this particular trade. Okay, you can lose whatever investment you uh, put in here. Now let's have a look if you do uh, put option. So put option, what happens here? Instead of buying share, so you don't buy share, but you find a counterparty who afraid that this share price goes down. You remember our coaster, because it's at the bottom. People, instead of selling shares, they think, oh, may, maybe it will recover, but it still can go down. So what they do, they try to ensure. So they want to be confident. So if the share continues to go down, what they do, they can sell it. So that's why they come to you and they say, look, do we have an agreement that you buy this particular stall, for example, at $10? Why did they choose $10 here? Because I don't want to buy at $10.50. I see the rolls happens between 10 and 11.50, so I want to get the best price. But I'm not sure if it's going up or not. I secured a capital, so for example, $10,000 for this particular trade. And if the share price goes up, what happens with my capital? It isn't working. It's just sitting on my like, account and doing nothing. So I'm not creating profitability. So if I sell the put option, what happens? I am setting the strike price. Strike price is the agreed price which I am happy to pay for the stock. So when I sold it with a $10 strike price, it means that I promised someone that I would buy that stock at $10 during one month. For example, one month or two weeks or one week or two months, it depends on my decision. So what happens in this particular case? I get 50 cents, assuming 50 cents. It could be 30 cents, it could be 70 cents, it depends on volatility on the market, etc., etc. But the thing is, I'm getting this 50 cents. When do you think I'm getting this 50 cents? Straight away. That's my cash income. What can I do with it? Reinvest. I can withdraw, go to buy it, right? I can do something with it. So that's the cash. That's the difference from value investors. That's that's the difference between long-term traders, because if they buy something, they don't create the income straight away. Put options allow you, even if you have cash on your account, you don't buy any stock, you generate extra cash, which you can do something with. Okay? So the next thing, so you make a profit if, so in this particular case, you make a profit only when? When the share goes up. With put options, when do you make a profit? If the share goes up, you definitely make a profit. So if the share stays on the same level, do you make money or not? You make money. So if the share goes down, okay, there is a hint here, but at what level you start losing money? 950. <coughs> because you're going to buy 10 and you already received it. You received 50 cents, so it means that cost of your shares, cost it's reduced by 50 cents. So in reality, until 9.51, you're still making money. So from that perspective, which is better? Buying stocks or selling puts? So selling puts has potentially less risks than stock. Because stocks, they can go to zero. Here they can go to zero. So the risk is practically the same, except that Maximum risk here is $9.50, not $10.50. Why? Because break-even is here. You understand? So when you use, if you properly use put options, your risk reduced by $1 in this particular case. So nearly 10%. Now, but maximum reward is what? Is limited here. And it's limited by your premium you received. You can't make more than 50 cents. If you bought stock here and the stock rallied to $20, how much you made? All the profit, right? $9.50. <clears throat> so if in this case you sold the put and it rallies to $20, how much you made? 50 cents. <laughs> so it's like all this balance, risky reward. You want a higher reward, you have to assume the higher risk. That's why with stocks it's higher risk. But if you're selling puts, 
less reward, but less risk as well. Okay, this is the case. So you probably understand because I talked about risks a lot, I, and I always focus on my profit, but thinking about how I can uh, protect my uh, downside. So that's the first question I ask. My rule is never lose the money. Okay, so the way I do it. So that's what actually it looks like for professional option traders. So if, oops, uh, so if, just a second. Let me just do this uh, slide. So this is the dollar price of premium. So if the stock goes up, my premium at certain level is limited. So that's my profitability. If the stock goes down, I don't go to zero. I'm not losing the strike price. I'm losing a bit less than if I bought the stock. The stock would put me from zero and all the way up. So it's direct line. Okay. But uh, because we understand that the, our risk is here where, what happens with security? Because I'm using stock, uh, using shares, so that the share goes down. So that's why the first question, which I always ask myself, how can I find the share which is not going to go down? How would you do it, guys? Hmm? Find a good company, correct. What else? Can the good company go down? Yes. Of course. So what do we use in addition to that? Technical analysis. Okay, so you know guys. So let's have a look at my steps. So first of all, I always identify the reason why I'm doing it. And uh, the reason why I'm doing it is because I want to know what am I going to do. Am I going to buy that stock? Do I want to own that company? Or do I want just to use this opportunity to create some cash in my account without any buying the stock? Because if I want to buy that particular stock, so I'm going to create a trade which eventually will lead that stock is put to me. So I bought it. And then probably I become a value investor which, and I hold the stock until it goes up. So it's like I'm buy, buying shares with discounts. Warren Buffett, by the way, using this strategy of selling puts option in 2011 made $14 billion. Kind of good stuff. So if Warren Buffett uses it, why not mm -hmm. us? Okay. So and then you can use it as an independent strategy. That is my step by step. I never start from technical analysis. Always start from fundamental analysis. And I know, guys, you're more like tech guys and you love that. But today I'm going to devote some time for that, okay, for fundamental analysis and ask you some questions and see how we go. Because uh, I just heard uh, someone said that fundamentals are difficult, like in mean, fundamental analysis. Okay, I have probably heard already, I have business degree, I completed executive MBA, and also I have financial and accountancy degree. And uh, of course it helps me to analyze the stock, but believe me, I know that you don't have to have those educations in order to understand fundamentals of the company. If somebody comes to you and asks you to borrow money, uh, can you give me money? And say, why? I want to invest in business. What questions are you going to ask? What kind of business? What kind of profitability? What are you going to sell? What market do you have an experience? All these questions, for whatever reason, people forget to ask directors of the companies when they buy their stocks. Okay, and I'll try to show you. So that's how we, my steps. So first, uh, fundamental analysis, I choose the good quality companies. But some good companies, they are very, very pricey. Why? Because everyone knows that they are good. So, for us, it is important to find a situation when those good companies, for whatever reason, fell in, in price. And it can happen during different events. It could be event within the company, or it could be event outside of the company. Whatever I told Donald Trump creates so many opportunities when the whole market goes down. And it's very strange because some companies will benefit from his policies. And if you understand that this specific company has to benefit from this new introduced policy or tax tariffs. So that's fantastic. It actually will create more profit. But when the event is announced, the company still collapses in price and it gives you a unique opportunity to enter this position and buy this fantastic company. Right? So and then so we choose undervalued companies, the company which are at the moment on sale. Okay, I'm not going to go in details tonight how we find it, but that's uh, pretty easy to do if you understand how. Then technical analysis, guys, you're all experts. Uh, personally, I use only several indicators. I use trend, I use candlesticks majority, also sometimes I use bar system. 
and uh, look at volume analysis, but majority of my it's uh, RSI, stochastic, and MACD. That's what I use. I look at this uh, on the monthly trend first when I see company uh, in the first time, then weekly, then daily, and then already when I enter position. If I am entering at the market, I probably look at the smaller charts. After I identify the entry point, and entry point is not entry point for options, the entry point for stock. So I'm assuming, okay, I am going to buy that stock at that particular price, for example, $10.50. And only after that I consider my strategy. I am not always use put options. I'm not always selling them. Sometimes I just buy stocks. Sometimes I buy call options. Sometimes I just pure, like, I mean, avoid the stock, whatever, in general. Even everything looks fine. Okay, because I don't like something about that. So I trade maybe five to six times using put options a month, not daily. Okay, but most of the time I just look at it. So I, I'm researching it, okay, and uh, practically everything is automated. So I, when I set the trade, I set the limit and it's triggers and I have a sell order and buy order straight away. So we close the position and I'll show you how it is done. So, and then always, I think about strategy B. And understand, remember when the point when we buy, the reason we buy because we believe it's going to go up. Correct? Yes. But I always think, okay, what if I'm wrong? Can I be wrong? Everyone can be. Okay, this Donald Trump comes with another announcement and something happens and the stock goes even lower down. So what might plan be? And this is probably the key element which you have to pay attention to when you're selling puts. But it's not only selling puts, even if you buy stocks, exactly the same. You probably guys use what? Stop losses, right? So that's the easiest way to do it. But you have to know when to put a stop loss at what level, because otherwise it can hit it and then move all the way up and you just uh, sell a stock which you own, or the security which you don't want. Okay, let's go one by one. So fundamental analysis. Guys, that looks scary. Or not? Who understands it? Who can read it? Like that's the value line report, and the reason why I use it because Warren Buffett uses the same company. So when I was researching uh, like uh, analytical tools, and I read this book uh, which was written about Warren Buffett, and he mentioned that he uses Morning Star and he uses Value Line, and uh, I thought, okay, if this guy uses Value Line, why not me? Okay, so that's the reason. So I looked at uh, this report, and based on figures, I can, uh, within probably three to five minutes, to tell you if the company is good, good quality, and also undervalued to the overvalued. Very quickly, okay? I'm looking at this report just with a glance of eyes. And I want to show you, if you want, if we have time, probably I can uh, show you how it's done it. And uh, let's have a look like that. So for instance, the question, let's play the game. Three companies, do you know these companies? Tesla, right? Uh, Walgreens Boots, who knows Walgreens Boots? Okay, it's the big pharmaceutical network, about 10,000 pharmacies in the United States. Uh, one of the biggest one. And Hershey. Now, I know guys, you're professional, but for example, if you decided to buy for long-term investment uh, company, which one would you choose? Okay, who chooses Tesla? Anyone? Nobody. Oh, guys, you're good. <laughs> okay, so who uses Walgreens? Yeah, people are going to get sick, you know, so the life uh, expectancy is growing, so and people use more and more drugs, so it's going to grow. What about Hershey? Oh, wow, chocolate flowers, right? So that's a good stuff. Of course, if you look at these companies, you will notice, if you look at those reports, and I'm going to show you now in a second, you will notice that during recession times, these companies, they behave differently. Okay, let's go quickly because we don't, we have limited time. So Tesla, I'm going to show you only two numbers. Okay, I'm not going to show many numbers, but two main important. So this is the sales. So it's how much companies sell. And look at this, from 40 million in 2008, it was 100 million, 116, 200, 400 million, 2 billion, 3 billion, 4 billion, 7 billion, 11 billion. That's what uh, Elon Musk is telling you when he has reports. Now, is it important that the sales level grow? Yep. It is, but what's more important? How much money you put in your pocket, right? So how much you make in money? 
And that's what Elon Musk doesn't want to talk about. Last, uh, his report, when the guy asked him about profit, he said, next question. He even didn't want to talk about it. And why? Let's have a look why. Net profit. D means deficit. So it means the losing money. It, so sold at 40 million, lost 82 million. More than they sold, okay? But basically, and look at this, minus 55 million, one, minus 154 million, 250 million, 300 million, 74 million. And last year, they lost $1.9 billion. Now, why people invest in this company? They believe in the idea. They believe in the idea. They like the guy. The guy is fantastic. He is so smart. He is amazing. But he's smart not only by pulling this great business. Do you know how many companies he has? Do you know that another company which made batteries sells the batteries to the Tesla and makes money? That's why the reason he has Tesla. Actually, four months ago, he was asked, he was made to sign a pledge that he's not going to become a director of any new startup. Do you know why? Because the investors were pissed off completely. They said, look, you constantly open new companies and you diversify your risk, but who are putting money in your company because you can survive right now because of us, our money. So, and that's why people did what? They asked him, you're not going to join any other company as a director? Yes, you can invest, you can fund it, but not to become a director. So focus on Tesla, make it work, make it money first. And after that. that's why recently he announced, oh, well, you know, I'm fed up with all those investors and ready to take the company private. Why? Because it's much easier. You don't have to report to anyone. So I personally avoid this company. Yes, it might heat up and go to 10 times more, but at the same time, it goes to bankruptcy. So, and actually, here's another question. Because he promises quite a lot. He promises what? That's the bold numbers. That's what he promises. He promises that he's going to make this money. But the question is, when I look at the bottom line, that's a calculation, earnings predictability based on his all promises before, only 35%. So three times out of 10, he's correct. Seven times, he's wrong. Okay. So let's have a look at other company, Walgreens Boots. Same story. Sales. Uh, 59 billion, 63 billion, 67 billion, 72 billion, 71, 72, 76, 103, 170, 111, 131. What happens? Growing. Good. Now, what about profit? Net profit. 2 billion, 2.1, 2 billion, 2.1, 2.4, 2.2, 2.4, 2.7, 4 billion, 5 billion, 5.5, 5.9, and one more. So, what happens? It's actually growing, right? And it's making money. And we're not surprised. We know the pharmacists, they're always making money. So in this particular case, they're promising that they're going, and actually, if you look at the reports, they constantly increase the amount of st stores, right? Here, number of stores, you can see, it's more and more and more. And they're planning to create the operation, like the profit, where is that profit here? 7.7 .7 million. Good. So you know, if you made a mistake, and you bought this company, and it's went even lower, if you bought at the wrong time, you know that potentially this company, what is going to happen with it? It's going to grow again. Because it is growing for the last 20 years, non-stop. Okay, some years less, some, some years less. Okay, now when they promise, that's their earnings predictability score. 85%. Is it better than 35%? Definitely, right? So eight times out of ten, they're correct about their future earnings. It gives you certain security in the sense that if you put the money, one million dollar there, so you kind of expect that they're going to do whatever they want. Okay, and the last company, Hershey, for lovers of chocolate. Oops. So sales, 59 billion, oh, sorry, it's another thing. Uh, 51, 52, 56, 60, 66, 71, 74, 73, 74, 75, 79. What happens? Sales growing. What about earnings? Net profit? 430 million, nearly 500, 580, 600, and etc., 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 and 10 billion dollars now, or 1 billion dollar now, and 1.1 billion there. So what happens with this company? 
constantly growing. Why? Because people eat chocolate, they have so many different brands all across the globe. Okay, if you look how many uh, countries they have. So let's go with the region here. Uh, I don't say here, but uh, they practically cover all countries, everywhere. So if recession hits one particular country, they will sell it another one. And the funny thing, if you look at the bad timing, uh, oh my goodness. if you look at the bad timing, so it's 2009 or 8, what happened here? The sales level was growing. They even didn't slow down. Some companies, when the recession hits, they go to the drain, first shift. So if you want to secure investment, that's kind of company you're looking for. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm selling puts. I can buy a company, but I can sell put. Okay? That's how I protect my downsides. What's the earnings predictability score? 100. They're right. They tell you something and they deliver the sum. Okay? This is what gives me security, like I mean confidence when I'm choosing the stock. So I'm never going to sell puts using Tesla. And that's how majority of companies who use this put option strategy will lose money if they choose the wrong company. <coughs> they sell put, after that they have to buy the stock and stock goes to the trade and they lose whatever people invest in them. Okay, so first key, good quality company. Second one, it's undervalued company. Because of time restriction, I'm not going to talk about this tonight, maybe next year, <laughs> when I'm invited again, but that's the way it works, okay? So guys, what are you going to buy now? So whoever bought Tesla, probably definitely try to avoid it, okay? And then you can look at these companies. So the next question, technical analysis. So I already told that I'm using uh, several indicators. So first of all, I prefer when it's horizontal, I know that some professionals, they try to catch like, I mean, when it goes downtrend and it's still making money on this downtrend, I prefer when it's already stopped falling. I know the reason why it's fell. I know that the company is doing something fundamentally to change it. And then I can see this is up, like horizontal trend or uptrend. That's why I enter position. And uh, of course, shares and support and indicators in oversold position. So I know that uh, people are going to enter now and start buying. Okay, that's the key. So for me, it shows that. So that's how it looks like. So probably I would enter somewhere here, this position. So I look at the indicator somewhere here. And the question is right now, so t tonight. Right? So, and uh, I'm looking, okay, fine. Should I enter or not? Because what? That's the previous low. Can it go here? Definitely it can, right? So can it go up there? It can. So if I was buying shares, and I would buy it here, and then the next day, Donald Trump announces something and the market goes down and it goes down as well. So I will be in a like, loss, uh, unrealized loss. But if I sell put, I can use the strike price with it, which I want. I can use the strike price $134, $130. Yes, I'm, I'm not getting a lot of premium, but I'm going to be conservative. If I'm happy with the stock, which can go to $200, I might choose this strike price. And that's why I was telling you, I am choosing my strike price based on my long-term view of this specific company. Because if I believe that that specific stock can go to $200, so I probably will try to buy it. So I'm going to set my strike price, so to promise to buy maybe somewhere here at $140 level. So and that's what I'm going to buy. Because after that it gets here, maybe it has a breakthrough and moves all the way up. And I just keep holding the stock and maybe use another strategy, like covered calls. So this is how I identify the place to enter. Okay, that's, that's why I consider it. And then I decide this strike price, this strike price, or this strike price. So, for example, uh, actually what I did for you, I didn't change the companies which I presented last year. And the reason why, because I was telling you that this company is a good, and today I kept the slides and just, you can check it where the company is uh, at the moment. Okay, at that time we were talking about uh, Signet. Signet was $53, it's a jewelry company. So remember I told you it's similar to Tiffany. Okay, and we were talking about different strike prices. So, but when you're choosing different company, you have to identify several things. So the premium, 
time value. There are different. When you receive the premium, it could be intrinsic value, it could be time value. Time value, it's where you make money. That's those 50 cents in the very beginning. And that's where your majority of uh, profit comes from. So you have to look at the time value. How open interest, how many traders trade that? How many people already purchased this stock? So it gives you an uh, idea about popularity of this particular security, and it gives you confidence that if you decide to sell, you can sell, and if you decide to buy, you actually will be able to buy it. Okay, and you wouldn't have to pay a high premium of that. Then uh, narrow bid helps a lot, so the lower the bid, the better. Um, between ask, bid and ask, here's 35 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents, you can see. And then sp one spread between strikes, here five dollars between strikes. So for example, another company is Nike, Nike. okay, so uh, we can see 52.50, 53.50, you see? Which one is better from the strike price perspective? Nike. Okay, because you kind of, if it drops down, you can always adjust the option premium and start trading. So it's much better. Uh, Signet, by the way, it was 53 now, uh, last night it's closed, I think, at 61. And Nike is above 70 now, and it was uh, around $54 now. So even if you bought the stock, you would make about 50% here. Exactly one year ago, it was, uh, sometimes in August I was speaking here. Okay, so it's important. Now let's have a look at what you uh, do. When you develop in the trading strategy, you have to look at several parameters. So first of all, duration. You know that option can last for how long? Two years, Two years three years. When we sell something, do we sell for long term or short term? Short term. When we buy something, we buy for long term or short term? When you're renting your apartment, it's like simple to understand. If you're renting apartment from someone, do you rent it on a weekly basis? I mean, they agree, okay, for a week and then again another for a week. You probably sign the agreement for what? For one year or two years, you know? And in this case, you can bargain the price down. But the guys who run hostels or hotels, what do they do? They sell on a daily basis, and they get much higher premium for same type of size of apartment. So similar stuff here. You can, when we are selling, remember you are selling for short term because you are receiving the maximum premium at this moment. So usually. It's